So in this video, I want to show you how to set up a simulation of a liquid droplet um, in, in a gas. The uh, simplest example would be a water droplet in air, and we see two examples here. This is a water droplet on a brass surface, and this is a water droplet on a glass surface. And you can see that the droplet shape is much different. This one is much taller and narrower. Um, the surface forces and gravitational forces uh, play big roles in the droplet shape. So there's a, a surface force between the water droplet and the surface here, the brass surface. Um, there's also surface tension creating a, a surface force along this interface between the water and the gas. Um, the density contrast between the water and the, the air also creates uh, a hydrostatic pressure within the um, droplet which causes it to deform. So taken together these different forces, the surface forces and the gravitational forces uh, create the droplet shape. So here's a COMSOL model that will simulate the shape of a droplet and let me show you how it's put together. The global definitions, I really am defining just two global definitions that will be used to set up the geometry. The local definitions, I've got these three local definitions. Uh, this is used to calculate an effective radius of the droplet. Uh, a density contrast, and this is the calculation for the bond number. The geometry shown here, this is an axisymmetric model, and there are just two elements of the geometry. Uh, this rectangle, this will be the air-filled chamber, and then this is the, the liquid uh, material that will have an initial shape of this rectangle. There are two materials that I'll use in this simulation. Air is uh, shown here, and then liquid is shown here. Or, and in this case, the liquid is water. So I've identified these uh, materials in the uh, material database, and I've assigned them to particular subdomains in the model. Now, to simulate this problem, I'm using a level set method uh, simulation and if I want to add that physics I would go here the physics is under fluid flow and it's in multi-phase flow right there level set and uh, this will be a laminar problem so I select that and I get these three physics will appear um, from that selection the basically what's happening is with this physics here this is controlling the physics of the fluid flow this is the physics for the level set problem uh, and then this node here couples the level set and the flow problems together let's look individually at how these are set up so the laminar flow problem when I set this up, I want to include gravity, so I check that, and by doing that, this uh, subnode here appears. And we'll take a look at that in a second. So the properties, um, these are the defaults, axial symmetry. Um, when I select the, um, when I set up the model, I, I set it up as a 2D axisymmetric problem. Uh, then here's the, the, the wall. This will be, you don't really need to do anything with these three because they're, they're either defaults or we'll override them. Gravity uh, acts in the Z, along the Z axis, in the negative Z axis direction, and we need to specify the gravitational acceleration. G underscore C-O-N-S-T is the default value for gravitational acceleration. And then we need an outflow boundary. Um, this is a pressure boundary, 
and somewhere in the model we need to specify the pressure. Um, we'll have problems getting a solution if we don't do that. And so I'm going to just specify this upper surface as constant pressure of equal, equal zero. So for the level set node, um, select both of these subdomains and I'm going to use the default values for these nodes. Um, and then I've selected the initial interface and outlet and another initial value node. And let me show you how I filled those out. So here's initial interface. This is the interface between the two fluids. And uh, it'll be right here. Um, that there's an outlet uh, defined for the level set. And then initial values. When I've set the first initial value, this is the default. And this is where I'm specifying the different fluids. So fluid number one, I'm going to specify as this region. And then with this another, this additional initial value node, I'm specifying that it's fluid number two right there. Now the multi-physics node, I'm going to use that to couple these two physics together. and. So we have this two-phase flow level set. That's going to define the fluid properties for fluid number one and fluid number two. All of this stuff here, I think for this problem, we can just leave as defaults. So for fluid number one, this is going to be defined as air. And what I'm doing is, is um, using the definitions of the fluids that are set up, set forth here in the materials node. So I select air for fluid number one and it's fluid number one because I've defined it as fluid number one up here uh, right there an in initial value. So there's fluid number one defined under the level set node and here I define what fluid number one is, what kind of material it is. And I need the density and the viscosity of that material that I get from the material database. And similarly, I need to define fluid number two. And I need density and viscosity. And what you can see here is that I've used the density and viscosities from the database, except for, in this case, uh, I have the dynamic viscosity of fluid number two. That's the liquid here. Uh, as 0.1. And now the, the dynamic viscosity of water is actually 100 times less than this, approximately, 0 0.001. Um, but I've made this value higher, uh, and that's in order to, um, to, to stabilize the solution. If it's a very low viscosity fluid, like water, then it's the, the fluid moves more quickly. Um, and so this is done to just to make the, the simulation run a little bit more smoothly. We could get it to work for the actual viscosity, but it, it takes longer. This will give us still the correct result, but um, it's going to it's going to take a bit longer to uh, reach that result. But as you see, as you will see, uh, it, it runs the, the the problem itself. Um, happens quite quickly. Okay, so we also need to um, include surface tension here. So we check that and we can get the surface tension from the library of these coefficients um, or we can specify what we want to use. Uh, 0.07 newtons per meter is about the surface tension between uh, liquid and air. Um, if we want to use it from the library, we can we can set it up like that. OK, so what I've done is uh, in the multi physics is to uh, specify this two phase flow level set node that we were just looking at. I also specified this one, the uh, wetted wall. So oops. Uh, 
Okay, so the wetted wall, this is this, uh, the, this boundary here, and this potentially could be wetted by this uh, fluid here, fluid number two. And so what I need to do is specify what the contact angle is along this wall. Um, and this will be related to the, the surface tension or the interfacial tension between the fluid and the, um, and the wall. And we specify it as a contact angle. So if it's equal to pi, then that's going to be a very hydrophobic uh, surface. And uh, if it's equal to zero, that's very hydrophilic. So we'll start off with a hydrophobic surface, and then we can uh, we can reduce this and take a look at the effect of uh, the interfacial tension with the, uh, the the surface. Okay, so the mesh for this is just a default mesh, although I've reduced the size to this extra fine setting. And let's take a look at the study. The study for this particular problem um, has some additional features that are put in by default. This phase initialization is one of them, and th this runs a uh, runs the, the level set problem uh, initially and gets the problem set up for execution. And then this time dependent node runs both level set and laminar flow uh, simultaneously and it uses the initial expression from the phase initialization um, that was just solved here. This, is, this should all be set up as by, by default um, when, you, uh, when you start up the, when you use a, uh, and include a study for this problem. Um, all this stuff should be, should, should be default. Um, it looks like I may have uh, switched from segregated to fully coupled. These problems vary. Sometimes they work better using a segregated solver, sometimes as fully coupled. And you can switch back and forth if you go here uh, and right click. Uh, there's fully coupled and there's segregated. Okay, so what I'm going to do, let's try running this. And what we've got here is the, let's see, let's take a look at it. So the, the problem now is going to be to take a look at this, um, this droplet that starts off as a thin layer spread out on the surface. Now, the contact angle is pi, so this will be a hydrophobic surface. So the surface will tend to repel the water and this layer of water will tend to, to beat up. So let's go ahead and run this. OK. So we've got the solution here, and uh, we've th there are several graphical displays that I have set up. What we were watching was uh, this display. You can see that we've got, well, it, it, it's axial symmetry. So this is a, a, a fairly round, fairly spherical droplet that we see in cross-section. And the total time up here 0 0.03 seconds. So this happens very quickly, uh, and we so so basically, you know, we start off with this film, and then it beads up into this uh, th this droplet or the spherical shape. I set this up, this display using contouring, uh, and I've got two contours of the volume fraction of fluid two that's uh, this variable here, and the, I use 0.5 to 1 uh, contour levels, and I fill it uh, with black, and I get something that looks like this. If I drop down the uh, contour intervals to, say, 0.5 to 0.6, 
then you can see we get something that more like this, what we might expect from just a, a single contour line. But I can do I can set up like this to get the to really highlight the shape of the droplet. Another way to visualize this is with this contour plot. This is showing the volume fraction uh, ranging from uh, approaching zero to approaching one. And you can see then we've got this transition zone right here that's that's fairly sharp, but but it is spread out over a finite width. And then the contour here, uh, the, the 0.5 contour, that's marking what we're taking as the, the edge of the droplet. And then we can also take a look at this in, uh, in a 3D perspective uh, where it looks like a, a nice beaded droplet on a hydrophobic surface. I was all int also interested in what this looks like uh, in animation. So oh, one thing that I should point out too, back up here under the geometry, when I set this geometry up, I set the length scale to millimeters. And so the full dimension of this is two millimeters. So this is just a very thin layer. All of these simulations are, are quite small. One thing that's interesting too is as you make this, this simulation bigger and these droplets are bigger, then uh, the, 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 as the droplet size increases, then gravitational forces become increasingly important and that'll change the shape of the droplet, tend to make it spread out more uh, 